द गीता थ्री पार्ट टू इन इंडिया इट हैज कम डाउन एज अ ट्रेडिशन दैट इफ देर इज अ गॉड ही मस्ट बी योर गॉड एंड माई गॉड टू हुम डज द सन बिलोंग यू से अंकल सैम इज एवरीबडीज अंकल If there is a god you ought to be able to see him if not let him go Each one thinks his method is best very good but remember it may be good for you One food which is indigestible to one is very digestible to another because it is good for you do not jump to that conclusion that your method is everybody's method that jack's coat fit john and mary all the uneducated uncultured unthinking men and women have been put into that sort of straight jacket think for yourselves become atheists become materialists that would be better exercise the mind what right have you to say that this man's method is wrong it may be wrong for you that is to say if you undertake the method you will be degraded but that does not mean that he will be degraded therefore says krishna if you have knowledge and see a man weak do not condemn him go to his level and help him if you can he must grow i can put five bucketfuls of knowledge into his head in five hours but what good will it do he will be a little worse than before when comes all this bondage of action because we change the soul with action according to our indian system there are two existences nature on the one side and the self the atma on the other by the word nature is meant not only all this material world but also our bodies the mind the will even down to what says i beyond all that is the infinite life and light of the soul the self the atma according to this philosophy the self is entirely separate from nature always was and always will be there never was a time when the spirit could be identified even with the mind it is self evident that the food you eat is manufacturing the mind all the time it is matter the self is above any connection with food whether you eat or not does not matter whether you think or not does not matter it is infinite light its light is the same always if you put a blue or a green glass before a light what has that got to do with the light its color is unchangeable it is the mind which changes and gives the different colors the moment the spirit leaves the body the whole thing goes to pieces the reality in nature is spirit reality itself the light of the spirit moves and speaks and does everything through our bodies minds etc it is the energy and the soul and the life of the spirit that is being worked upon in different ways by matter the spirit is the cause of all our thoughts and body action and everything but it is untouched by good or evil pleasure or pain heat or cold and all the dualism of nature although it lends its light to everything therefore arjun all these actions are in nature nature is working out her own laws in our bodies and minds we identify ourselves with nature and say i am doing this this way delusion ceases us we always act under some compulsion when hunger compels me i eat and suffering is still worse slavery the real i is eternally free what can compel it to do anything the sufferer in the nature is in the nature it is only when we identify ourselves with the body that we say i am suffering i am mr so and so all such nonsense but he who has known the truth holds himself aloof whatever his body does whatever his mind does he does not care but mind you the vast majority of mankind are under this delusion and whenever they do any good they feel that they are the doers they are not yet able to understand higher philosophy do not disturb their faith they are shunning evil and doing good great idea let them have it they are all workers for good by degrees they will think 
that there is greater glory than that of doing good. They will only witness and things are done. Gradually, they will understand. When they have shunned all evil and done all good, then they will begin to realize that they are beyond all nature. They are not the doers. They stand apart. They are the witness. They simply stand and look. Nature is begetting all the universe. They turn their backs. In the beginning, O oh beloved, there only existed that existence. Nothing else existed. And that brooding everything else was created. Even those who know the path act impelled by their own nature. Everyone acts according to his nature. He cannot transcend it. The atom cannot disobey the law. Whether it is the mental or the physical atom, it must obey the law. What is the use of external restra restraint? What makes the value of anything in life? Not enjoyment, not possessions. Analyze everything. You will find there is no ex value except in experience to teach us something. And in many cases, it is our hardships that give us better experience than enjoyment. Many times, blows give us better experience than the caresses of nature. Even famine has its place and value. According to Krishna, we are not beings just come into existence. We are not new beings just come into existence. Our minds are not new minds. In modern times, we all know that every child brings with him all the past, not only of humanity, but of the plant life. There are all the past chapters in this present chapter, and there are a whole lot of future chapters before him. Everyone has its path mapped and sketched and planned out for him. And in spite of all this darkness, there cannot be anything uncaused, no event, no circumstance. It is simply our ignorance. The whole infinite chain of causation is bound one link to another back to nature. The whole universe is bound by that sort of chain. It is universal chain of cause and effect. You receiving one link, one part, I another, and that part is our own nature. 